G'day mates, it's Donny from Donny's Garage and Adventures. Today I'm going to actually go through just some basic power injection stuff because a lot of people seem to have some trouble with it. And I've got a Hanson Electric uh, Power 8 board that I'll be um, just showing some examples with. So let's get into it. Okay, so I'm just going to show at the moment, I've got the pixel string connected up here. So I don't have too much bent space, but it goes behind there under that pixel. Then what I've done is just here, I've actually split it out. So there's two different ways that you can do a power injection. One is that you just tee into the existing uh, wiring. The other is you actually leave the positive disconnected where you want to do the break. And I'll show you what, what that actually means in a second when I turn the lights on. So behind that, where I'm actually driving the power from is this Hanson Electric Power 8 board. So what it does is it brings in power off a power supply and then splits it out to eight individual outputs that are all fused. So you've actually got the ability to use a power supply but break it down to individual outputs and you've also got a null, pic uh, not a null pixel, a null buffer. So my understanding of a null buffer is instead of a null pixel where you've got to go into your controller and actually say, oh, I've got one null pixel or I've got two null pixels or however many you have, a null buffer, you pretty much just wire in line with your existing pixels and it does the same thing as what a null pixel would do without you having to change anything in the controller. So they're a pretty nifty little board. Um, Hanson Electronics make those. You'll see a lot of stuff that I've got from Hanson Electronics. Sorry about the dodgy sort of setup, but you know, it's an example just to show you how it all works. All right, so what I'll do now, I'm just gonna send red to these lights just so everyone can see it. And you'll see at the moment, we've lit up all the way until where I've done the break. So this is where, because I've done the split on the positive, that's just sitting there by itself. There's nothing that's actually pushing power further than that. That's where the break actually occurs. The power I'm actually gonna send in is from the, power, the DC power eight into this to power the rest of the string. So this is just an example with a you know, very few pixels, but if you, you, know, you can do this when you've got 50, 100, however many you want to actually put in and you know, see how many you can actually, actually add, a, add along the way. But I find this is one of the best ways to do it because you then know that if there's an issue with power injection, that it's going to be starting from where you've done this break here. If you don't do the break, the only real advantage that you get is that you're actually u utilizing the power from your controller as well as the power that you're getting from this you know, separate board over here. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is just connect up the negative wire into my power rate. And you should see now that all of the additional pixels have lit up. So it's just a really easy way of uh, doing the power injection is literally just wire in positive and negative. One of the other things that you've gotta be careful of is the negative has to still tie back to the controller. So what I was saying before, how I've cut the positive wire, you can't do that with the negative wire. The negative wire actually is part of what your data from the pixels actually gets when it's doing, you know, when it's doing a sequence. So you have to make sure that the negative still ties back to your controller. So I'll just, I'll change the angle and show everyone what I mean by that. Yeah, as you can see now, the whole string's lit up pretty, easy to sort of see what's going on there. Now, what I'm talking about with tied back to the controller with the negative, so you can see this is the negative wire here, the one that's actually got the stripes on it. I've actually got the uh, negative going onto the next pixel, the negative going back to the power eight controller as well. Whereas like you can see with the positive, it's just sitting over here by itself. The data line is just, it's just an inline, just goes straight onto the data. Um, that's what I mean by tying back to the negative. You've got to make sure that negative goes all the way back to your controller. Otherwise, when you change the patterns, you're not going to see a change in pattern. You'll probably just see one color or some weird things happen with your, um, with your data there. All right, this is just one extra thing I wanted to show everyone about the Power 8 board. So as you can see, I've got brown fuses along here. I think they're 7.5 amp fuses that I had. I've deliberately put a 4 amp fuse in here that I've actually blown. Um, just so I can show you what happens. So when you've actually got everything connected up, you'll see now there's a red light that actually comes on. That indicates that you've got a blown fuse. So that's another reason why these Power 8 boards are really good to use because you can imagine at night if you've had something go wrong, 
you know, you got to bring the torch out just to see what's going on other than your lights flashing. You can then look at the board and very easily figure out, you know, what fuse actually blew and which one have I got to change rather than having to, you know, pull each one out and then have a look at it to try and figure out what's going on. So yeah, they're really cool little board. Um, hope the power injection thing makes sense. As I said, the other way of doing it is basically just instead of having the positive wire sitting by itself here, tie it back to this wire as well. That way you'll be using power from your main controller box plus the additional power supply that you're using. Sometimes I do that if it um, make, makes sense based on where I've got control, like power supplies in the yard just because it then balances power between a couple of supplies. But if you're just purely trying to run power off something and get the data and the, um, the, data and the negative from your controller, this is the best way of doing it because then you're, you, you, know, you can actually have this power supply in a completely separate part of your yard to actually run the power for the, for the next set of lights. So hope that helps everyone. Cheers.